Words are extremely powerful. You actually create your own laws and limitations for yourself using the words that you use most often. Dr. Emoto's water experiment proved that words and intention actually have a physical impact on water. Dr. Emoto's laboratory does research on water samples which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. Somebody said, thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. Idiot. I hate you. Emoto Masaru's numerous experiments aimed at finding the word that cleanses water most powerfully have shown that it is not just one word, but a combination of two. Love and gratitude. Dr. Emoto has conducted another interesting experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month, he said, thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one, he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. that we're going to say good, beautiful, positive things to the good apple and bad, nasty things to the bad apple. So I just took out my apples from the bad apple jar and the good apple jar. And as you can see, this is amazing. Even for the most skeptical ones out there, you have to admit that this is, and I have to admit, I was one of those that was a little skeptical. Try using 25 containers, or even 50 containers. This works, and it shows that our thoughts literally shapes our lives. I love you, Strawberry. Love, 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 love. I hate you, Strawberry. Hate, 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 hate you, hate. Love, 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 love. Hate, 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 hate. That looks completely normal. Look at the fungus mold disgustingness on the hate berry. Look at this thing. Once I feed you with an idea that you are susceptible to something, uh, look, I can feed you with an idea that this pill that we just got from the pharmaceutical company, it's the greatest, best thing for your issue and I give you this pill and you get better, and then later you find out it was a sugar pill and everybody goes, yeah, that's called the placebo effect. And I go, what does it really mean? I said, you didn't get healed by the pill, you got healed by the belief in the pill. 
And I go, well, yeah, that, that's what placebo is all about. And at least one third, minimum of one third of all medical intervention is, uh, it's a placebo effect of where the healing comes from. Everybody goes, yeah, I know about the placebo. I go, yeah, but that's a result of positive thinking. What about negative thinking? Uh, and this is what we don't talk about, but the reality is it's equally powerful in regard to affecting your biology as is positive thinking, but it works in the opposite direction. A negative thought is called the nocebo effect. It can cause any disease and, and you can die. If you believe you're going to die, you can die from the belief. So uh, we really have to watch out because as psychologists would tell us, 70% or more of our thoughts are negative and redundant. We're playing the same negative thoughts. I go, if, if thoughts had nothing to do with it, fine. But thoughts, positive or negative, shape our biology. And all of a sudden it says, well, now it's time to wake up because our negative thinking is, is manifesting a negative life experience. The greatest teacher to ever live, the carpenter from the plains of Galilee, once said, by your words, you are justified, and by your words, you are condemned. He understood the spiritual properties words possessed. Rumor has it, the prime creator actually spoke the universe into existence, also known as cymatics or vibration. And remember, you are a piece of the creator and possess the same creative qualities. Never use phrases like, this is killing me, or this makes me sick. Though lighthearted, those are actual commands that are stirring energy in motion. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. There are high energy words, and there are low energy words. High energy words attract to you positive people, positive situations, positive outcomes, positive circumstances. They also raise your health and the health and wellness of those listening. From the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands brings them reward. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Low energy words do the exact opposite. They attract all manner of negative situations and circumstances, and they have also been proven to lower your immune system, making you more susceptible to illness. Faith comes by hearing. It's like when we say, I can do this, and then I set out to accomplish it. That it is the very words that when heard, because faith comes by hearing, that when you hear yourself saying these words, I can do this, that you actually can get the courage and the strength and the wherewithal to get something done. That's why it's not just important to, to think good thoughts. You have to speak those thoughts. If you want things to come out and you want them to be manifested into the world, if you have a thought within you, you need to speak that thought out. You need to create by speaking the very thing that you had within you. You need to bring somehow into this world and make it so. Think of it this way. A thought that is within you is not in this world. The thought that is within you is within you. It is only until you speak that thought and you give it a vibration in this world that it actually manifests. The scriptures say that God spoke and everything became. The scriptures say that every word that we speak will be judged accordingly. That we will be held accountable for everything that we say and everything that we think. This is why we must take every thought captive. 
every thought that comes into our mind, it has the potential to create that thought in the world if manifested by the words that you speak. Your thoughts create, your words make them become the very thing that you believe that they will be. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. Jesus said that your words are spirit. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. People do things that annoy, disappoint, and anger. Though we cannot look into another's heart, we assume that we know a bad motive or even a bad person when we see one. This topic of judging others could actually be taught in a two-word sermon. When it comes to hating, gossiping, ignoring, ridiculing, holding grudges, or wanting to cause harm, please apply the following. Stop it. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Haven't we all, at one time or another, meekly approached the mercy seat and pleaded for grace? Haven't we wished with all the energy of our souls for mercy to be forgiven for the mistakes we have made and the sins we have committed? Forgiving ourselves and others is not easy. In fact, for most of us, it requires a major change in our attitude and way of thinking, even a change of heart. This mighty change of heart is exactly what the gospel of Jesus Christ is designed to bring about. I'm truly, truly sorry. Let us be kind. Let us forgive. Let us talk peacefully with each other. Let us do good unto all men. Allowing us to see others the way our Heavenly Father sees us as flawed and imperfect mortals who have potential and worth far beyond our capacity to imagine. Because God loves us so much, we too must love and forgive. Remember, in the end, it is the merciful who obtain mercy.
You can think yourself into a depression. You can think your way into stress. You can think your way into misery, frustration. There's so much more power in the mind than you probably like to give yourself credit for. Change your mind. Decide that you love yourself enough to not surround yourself with people, things, and situations that can have your mind continuing to spiral down this negative and dysfunctional train. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Believe it or not, each word that you speak is an affirmation. You are always affirming that you want more of it into your life by speaking it, by placing your attention on it, by talking about it. Since that's the case, only talk about the joyous things that you would like to have and experience. And before you know it, those words will become an everyday part of your vocabulary and your life will soon follow suit.